So, of course, in Parshas Yisro, we have the Sarasa Dibros, famous Ten Commandments. And uh, while there's certainly a lot of discussion, you know, putting them on a different pedestal or not, uh, there's no question that uh, when Akash Baruch Hu gave us the Sarasa Dibros, it seemed to encapsulate. Uh, the, essen, the essential qualities of, of, of our relationship with the Kodesh Baruch Hu. Uh, we shine them go through, the Gonim, we talk about how really Kola Tarkula is included in the Aserah Sadibros. So maybe they, sh- they certainly shouldn't stand apart, um, we shouldn't fall into the trap of thinking these count more than the other ones, but there's no question that they're, they're very symbolic of the essential new relationship that we developed with the Kaddish Baruch Hu at the time of, of Matan Torah. So the question is asked, if, if that's really what's, what's going on, in terms of the Kaddish Baruch Hu, in a sense, betrothing us and, and the, all of the, uh, the beautiful comparisons to the Chas of Akala and all of the aspects of this unique relationship that is now being forged at, uh, at Har Sinai, if, if that's what's going on, why, why not pick... The, the commandments, why not pick the Dibros that seem to reflect most fundamentally on that new relationship? Why, why would the Torah, the, the question is asked, why wouldn't the Torah, uh, why would not Kodesh Baruch Hu choose uniquely Jewish mitzvos, uniquely mitzvos that correspond to this new relationship? For, for the service of Dibros to be replete with mitzvos that are fundamental to all of humanity, you know, Lotignov, Lotirtzach, Lotinov, uh, Avodizara. These are all very basic. These are all, uh, everyone, everyone has uh, these obligations. They are part of the, you know, Zayim Mitzvah's Bein Noach. They're very, you know, uh, even in Kibbut Avim, you could argue maybe it's not a mitzvah in the classical sense, but certainly they, they can all relate to it. Um, and they all understand it. So it, it would make sense. I guess Shabbos is the one that stands out as being truly unique, you know, to to Klal Yisrael. Um, and we can all certainly we, can, we all understand that. But why is there so much in the Sefer Sadibros that seems to reflect that which is universal? And this is not the time of universality. This is the time of uniqueness of, of Hakadosh Baruch Hu expressing His uh, connection, unique new connection, and new relationship with uh, with the Jewish people. So I saw an answer, actually I heard an answer many years ago, I saw it subsequently in different places, that uh, I think is very, very important for us to remember. And again, it's sort of like a double-edged sword, these things, where on the one hand, you know, uh, when you, when the sort of stakes get higher and things get elevated um, for the Jewish people, on the one hand you can say, you know, I, you know it's more responsibility, but on the other hand, you know, it does, it, it does uh, point out the, the unique nature of our relationship. And again, we have to carry these unique and special responsibilities not as a burden, chas v'shalom, but as a badge of honor. You know, the Monsieur Sashon talks about the, you know, the soldier who's uh, so committed to the, uh, the king, to the country, he's ready to put his life. It's almost, and that, that's a mentality. He explains that the, it's almost like the more you raise the stakes, you know, bring it on. You know, I want to show my love. I want to show my loyalty. I want to show... Um, how committed I am to to the country, to the king. That the the bigger the challenge, the the greater the excitement, and the the greater the sense of uh, of focus and commitment. You know, on the other hand, if we don't have that kind of connection, that goes Baruch Sometimes we th- see these things as burdens. So it, it does it does represent a double edged sword. But certainly, our job is to is to focus on on the first perspective. That the, look how special we are. And look how much we have to recognize as Kla Yisrael, Zam Yisrael, as the Pasuk uh, in this week's parsha says, the Mamlachas Kohan of the Goy Kadosh, this unique relationship. So the, the answer uh, speaks about the fact that Akash Baruch Hu is Gufa in the representation of the mitzvahs that seem to be universal. Akash Baruch Hu is telling us, I want, to under, I want you to understand that even on these levels, even on these mitzvahs, which seem to, to have everyone sort of buying in to these concepts and to these mitzvahs, you're my people. You're Kla Yisrael. And by being the Mamlachas Kanavagoy Kadosh, that you are becoming 
at this particular moment in time, this incredibly significant moment in time of, of Matan Torah, the time that, uh, that we became a people, uh, we need to know that the stakes are higher and the stakes are different. And that we, don't, we, we can't look at these things the same way. You take Avodah Zorah. Right, so everyone, if you stop a person, you say, you know, what is Avodah Zarah? Avodah Zarah is idol worship. You can't have a Buddha in your house. You can't bow down to an idol. You can't, uh, you can't do uh, idol worship. It seems, uh, you know, it's pretty straightforward. But we, when we look at Chazal, we know that uh, that's not the only thing that's called Avodah Zarah. Kalako is kill over Avodah Zarah. We know that somebody who loses, loses it, who gets angry, who's enraged, and... Um, and it has, you know, the veins popping out of the neck because of uh, losing sight of who runs the world. That is considered Avodah Zorah. How in the world would anybody ever relate to that if we wouldn't have Torah, we wouldn't have, you know, the Torah the Torah Shabbat Pet together with the Torah Shabbat Sav that explains to us what is the Jewish definition of, of Avodah Zorah. It's not just the bowing down to the to the idol. It's it's anything that separates and severs our our focus in our understanding of who runs the world. When a person gets angry, there's no, uh, there's, 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 there's a disconnect at that point. You're, you're forgetting who runs the world. What are you getting so angry about? Uh, God's little tov. This is what Kodesh Baruch Hu wants. So, kolakoyiz, kilovet avodah zara. Says lo, lo tignov. Okay, do not steal. So, again, technically, we know that, of course, the, the main focus is, is, uh, is um, kidnapping. But the truth of the matter is, you know, all of the, all of the, um, the types of stealing are inherent in, in, the, in the deeper meaning of Lotiknov. And we know that when we talk about Geneva, we're not, we don't just talk about the Geneva of a classical sense, stealing a human being, stealing money. These are all logical things that we all can relate to, but we know from a Torah's point of view, there's Geneva's Das, there's Gezel Shena, there's so many other types of stealing uh, that come into play under the banner of Lotiknov. And... Um, and, and all of those have important uh, ramifications, and all of those have to be seen. And these are things that pe- people can't relate to. To steal somebody's sleep, to steal somebody's das, um, these are all, uh, I saw somebody, you know, quote uh, some Rabbanim, I saw, I, uh, somebody just told me, they, they, you know, one of these videos that get uh, sent around, that, you know, when you're talking to somebody, and while you're talking to somebody, you're, um, you know, you're texting or whatever, the typical thing that you're, we're half, you know, connected to the person. So, you know, how, how does that make a person feel? You know, you're sort of you're stealing, you're stealing their, you know, their, their identity and, and their self-esteem because you're not that important. So there's a level of, of Geneva there as well. There's a lot you know, that we can think about of what Lotigno really means to a Jew on the highest standards that the, the rest of the world can relate to. Because Baruch was reminding us, this is, this is the new deal. This is the new relationship. And that even the things that everyone buys into, low tin of course, means don't commit adultery. We have Gila Reyes. We, we, know, we know the drill of what's prohibited on a direct, obvious level. Everyone knows that. But then we have you know, low tin of uh, on a deeper level, of the whole Osik Revu, the whole concept of, of getting close, the whole idea of, uh, of anything that brings one even close to to, to Arayas, and the touching and the kissing and, the, and all of the other guidelines that the Torah talks about in 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 Achimos, which the Chazal explain, this is a it's a different definition of, of lotinov. Um, so so you know it's something that again we have to reinforce. And the truth of the matter is, if we, if we look into it, you know there is even you know kibbut avim when you when you approach it from the point of the halachic implications. What does the Torah truly say? Let's go to the Shulchan Aruch. Let's see the Torah's definition and, or the Halacha's definition of what the Torah says. We'll get a whole new perspective. So, so this is the concept for us to recognize that uh, in part of in, you know, making us some Amlechus kind of a God Kadosh, because Baruch Hu raised the bar. In raising the bar, he really indicated to us how special we are and how much he expects of us. And that expectation, again, can't be seen as a burden, but for care, it needs to be seen because we're so special, because HaKadosh Baruch Hu knows we can do this. He, he gave us all these opportunities to come closer to him, to raise our, our level, not to sort of be the mediocre uh, individual out there that maybe is happy to plot along in life, uh, just being very simple and very basic. Our job is to be holy and sublime. And Hashem, if we appreciate these things and continue to learn about them and to internalize them, Position will be successful in that mission.